school addition. Oh, thank you, Mr. Crosley, uh, board members, administration. There's two um, housekeeping matters I want to just bring up briefly. Uh, the first is that I belong to many groups in Boyertown, and I want you all to know, and the audience to know, I speak just for myself. I'm not speaking for other groups. In fact, my voice is so solitary and singular, I'm not speaking for Mary Lou tonight either. I like it. The second point I want to make uh, is that Wednesday of last week, I received a call from Dr. Fagley's secretary, and she asked me if I would meet with Dr. Fagley and Mr. Miles. I bring this up as a matter of full disclosure that yes, I did meet with Dr. Fagley and Mr. Miles last Friday. It was a get to know you session between us and also for me to express some concerns I had of what's occurring in our school district and our community in particular. I think perhaps my concern was best expressed in the speaking point I made the last time I spoke. I normally try to have a speaking point, and the four times I have spoken to you, I've had a speaking point to try and leave with you. Last month when I spoke, my speaking point was a typing exercise that I had in 12th grade about now is the time for all good men to come to the age of their country. And I changed that around in my final comment to say that now is a time for all good men to come to the age of their community and do what is best for their community. I say that because this is the first experience I'm having with school problems in this administration. I've been involved in many things in our community and <coughs> the church, but never the school. And I am concerned when I see this we and they mentality emerging at these meetings and with people that are appearing here. I don't think there's a villain in the we. I don't think there's a villain in the they. I think the villain is in the procedure and the process that has been developed for having these meetings. We are told to speak on item on the agenda. We don't always know what the agenda is going to be, and if we see the agenda item, we don't know the very complex facts and situations in the agenda. And then we're told you have 90 seconds. You give me 90 seconds to speak, and I am going to put a shot out there that's going to be a sound bite for tomorrow be picked up by the paper and reporters. Or we have three minutes. You give me three minutes to speak, and I will give you two sound bites and two shots across the board to be picked up by the reporters for the newspaper tomorrow. We don't really get down to the issues and the concerns and be able to express them. Another reason we can't discuss them is because it's a monologue. We can only speak to you. You may not speak back to us. I have never seen a matter resolved where it's only a monologue. This is not the late night comedian show where they come out, Johnny Carson and all those other daffing come out and they give you a 15 minute monologue and that's their show. If we cannot have a dialogue we are never going to solve the issues and the problems. We're never going to have the support between the community that elected you and the administration. The first time I spoke, I said to you, I don't envy your position and your situation. It's a mammoth task. But we are not here to just take you apart on. We'd like to share and know what is happening and why it's happening. The defining moment in this whole project was tearing down the old school. It's a great deal more complex than that. There are others in the audience tonight that do as much or more than I do in the community. Our mayor and Frank Deary, council president. 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I hope that one day, and I'm going to get to this if I may, I want to say that this school system is the crown jewel of our community. Every time we speak to people coming into Boyertown, be it new business or something else, we speak to them about our school district. We are proud of it. We're not trying to take it apart. But we want to be part of you in learning what's going on and listen, have you listen to our comments. And at last night, last, sorry, last week's meeting with Mr. Miles and Dr. Faith, I suggest perhaps we have a community meeting. Let us get together and let us speak about this in a dialogue and not a monologue. And I hope at that conference that we can have that I am given the stopwatch to, to hold and that when you speak, to <laughs> I can say 30 seconds. <laughs> You're not bad people and we're not bad people. And the short time I had to meet last week with Mr. Miles and Dr. Fagley, I think I got to know them better and they got to know me. And I think my speaking past my 30-second deadline here lets you know that we do want to meet with you. We do want to resolve the issues here. Now my speaking point to leave with you tonight. I'm reading a book right now, and it's the, on Proverbs, not the biblical Proverbs, but rather the Proverbs of Politics. And it talks about various leaders and the Proverbs they have spoken of. And the one chapter I'm on right now is probably our two greatest leaders from the last century, President Franklin Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill. When England being attacked by Germany, we came their aid. And when we were attacked at Pearl Harbor by the Japan, Prime Minister Churchill wrote to President Roosevelt, we are in the same boat now. And that's what I want to convey to you, we are in the same boat. It's our community, it's your community, it's our school, it's your school. And when I say we're in the same boat, now let me add to that proverb, let's paddle together. Thank you.